Greetings, hi, hello everyone and welcome everybody. This is Dennis from Rigid Audio and in this video we will together create the wonderful Rigid Grand Piano contact instrument using Contact GUI Maker and I will guide you through the whole process. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to start with a new project and this one is going to be called, no, not Rigid Audio, Rigid Grand. So we keep the default size, that's perfect. And okay, so to start with, what we need is a lovely background image that I've uh, prepared already. It's this one. And we're going to import that into the library simply by drag and drop. And yep, it's a wallpaper exactly and import it. Takes a bit of time. There we go. Let's see, where is it? Oh. There it is. Okay, so we drag that in. Beautiful. Okay, let's first compile the thing. No, let's first save the project and then compile it so that we can have a look in contact already. There we go. Oh, I did already open up that. Let me close that one. Okay, Richard Grant. So here we go. Perfect. I would say we start with mapping all the samples and there are quite a lot of them. Uh, these are absolutely beautiful. Here they are. Let me copy those to the project folder of Rigid Grant. We open the containing folder. Uh, I forgot. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Contact you. Oh my god. Projects. Rigid Grant samples. There we go. Okay, excellent. Well then, now let's start with the mapping process. Let me get rid of that. So let me get rid of the basic demonstration of Soul Wave. We don't need that. And here we are. Samples. Yeah. And what we basically what we need to do now is um, map those onto each key. Uh, key range, so to speak. So we start with the lowest one, A0. Let's see. That should be here. Okay. Let's see. Okay, preview. School. Oh, let's choose auto. Okay. So I'll uh, put that onto C. And we continue with D sharp and so forth. That was wrong. Wrong position. Oh no. Yeah, that's better. Stop it here. So now what you uh, can do or have to do is um, map those to all the keys, uh, the keys in between. So what you can do is click anywhere in the blank space in here in the mapping editor and then um, Press Control or Command A for all to select all the nodes, and then you press this little auto spread zone key ranges. Yeah, that's what it's called. And now it's mapped across the entire keyboard, which is perfect and exactly what we want. And uh, we should already be able to play it. Let me give it a quick go. Yep. Of course, we need to play with the release. Okay, the next thing on the list is mapping the uh, release samples that we got as well. These are those ones. Yep, pretty amazing. But before we can do that, what we have to do is we need to enable the second sample layer, or in other words, we uh, need to enable a sample layer for release playback for these release samples so that they play when we, uh, when we stop a node. So we enable B and here we push this button for node of release trigger and press compile. So, okay, that does work. So let's see. And now we should be able to map those onto the, uh, the B layer. Let me see how many nodes we got around 89 or something, 88, okay. Uh, so I think we will map them, yeah, maybe like this, because they sound more or less pretty identical. Okay, let's do it like this. 
press the auto spread zone key ranges once again and let's see what we got yeah that does work of course that's way too loud but we will take care of that in a minute let me first of all make the release time a bit bigger actually let's use a hd only yeah i think that's cool yeah okay we keep it on the maximum so then let's bring in a knob uh, into our project that will control the volume of the uh, release notes or the release layer let me see which one can we take white on white oh, it's, maybe it's not mm, okay what about a black one yeah, i think that one does look pretty cool we got the big one and the medium one yeah that's nice let's go with the medium one let's make the label black as well so that's the readability is a bit better uh, we call that release volume for now maybe we just say yeah just make it just make it real well for now so now let's see we need to assign an action to control the volume of sample layer b and for that we type in volume and there we got it volume and we need to set it to control layer b and press compile and give it a go so yeah that's cool but i guess we can limit it somewhere because you never want to hear it that loud what we can do for that is use the custom scaling and maybe draw a line like like this maybe yeah that should work let's give it a go and let's see yeah i think that's pretty cool so what's next on the list i would say a beautiful piano needs a beautiful reverb so this is what we're going to add next so to do that we are going to duplicate that knob by uh, clicking it once to select it and then pressing ctrl or command d on your keyboard and there we have it let's put it right there maybe maybe like so and we call that reverb simply so let's see what we need we put that back to linear and we put that back to simple layer a because we want to as you remember we want to affect simple layer a which is our sustain layer and now we need to look for reverb and we use the basic reverb center mount exactly what we want press compile and give it a go that's nice yeah i think that does work and there's one more thing i want to do that uh that was a quick idea that i had in my mind and what we're going to do is we add another layer of the same set of samples uh, of the sustained samples and we copy them over to layer c and we call that let's say i don't know maybe maybe oct because what i want to do is the following so click we click uh, any sample in that set of samples here we press ctrl command a then we press copy okay and what i want to do is um an interesting thing so we have layer a sustain and we have another layer of the same set of samples so what we do is we once again select all samples and then we go to go over to tune and make this minus 12 semitones so that it's one octave below the original and i guess we can't hear it now because what we need to do once again is to enable that one and we can of course enter the name here if we want to 
But for now, I think what we are going to do is since all these layers are on top of each other, you know what I'm going to do? I'll make it different. I just type that one. Sustain. So we enabled layer C. Okay, compile. And now we should be able to... Yes, we have now the same set one octave below. One final thing that I want to add now is some kind of a blend knob or a mix knob to adjust the amount of uh, uh, octaving. What we're going to do is we simply use that one. Control Command D to duplicate. I put it on top of the other one and we say maybe oct blend or something. So we, yes, we might need a custom scaling. Let me see. So the first one should the control the volume of A, which is correct. Let's get to linear scaling. And what we want to do now is when we are at the, the center of the knob, it should have the, if I'm not mistaken, it should have the full volume. So that does mean... No, uh, actually, sorry, it's the other way around. It should be something like... Yeah, it should be something like this. Oh, okay. Let me get rid of those. So that means if we are at that spot... Well, I was wrong, of course. I was wrong once again. I'm sorry for that. We do it like this. Yeah, we got full volume. Full volume. And then we... Yeah, we fade it out. Like so. Okay, apply. And now we do the same thing again. And this time... We control sample layer C and we choose a custom scaling once again and now it should be the other way around. So that means when we are here it should at its maximum, yeah, exactly. Okay, like so. And then all the way up. If I'm not mistaken, oops, I accidentally erased some of those notes. Doesn't need to be perfect. Let me see, yeah, like so. Okay, let's give it a go. Save the project and press compile. And then let's see what it does. Yeah. The way you can easily fade between those uh, two layers. Let me adjust the, the release a bit of that one. Is it selected? Yes, it is. Okay. Cool, uh, like so, and maybe we can go a bit crazy in here and put some kind of pseudo stereo modeling or something. Yeah, why not? Actually, did I do something wrong? Oh no. Yeah, something like around 300 to 400 milliseconds. Okay, that should be fine, that should work. And I say, that's it for a very basic, beautiful, rigid grand piano.